Hello space fans, welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. Now space can be a very violent and turbulent place for celestial bodies, and for asteroids that's no different. We've been getting better and better at detecting asteroids and other near-Earth objects, which typically appear as small dots moving across the field of view of a telescope. However, astronomers observed something a little odd when using the Catalina and PanSTAR survey back in September of 2013. A fuzzy asteroid. So then, the Keck Observatory on Mauna Kea in Hawaii was used to follow up to get a closer look to see if this was actually an asteroid with debris or something more. And come to find out it was. They were able to resolve three distinct objects surrounded in some dust. This was just too good of an opportunity to pass up, so observation time was used from the Hubble Space Telescope to get an even closer look at what was going on up there. Now since the Hubble Space Telescope has around three times the focal length of Keck, it's able to resolve smaller objects in greater detail. And boy was it worth it. Using that advantage, it not only resolved those three objects, but realized there were actually ten distinct celestial bodies up there moving in tandem through space. Each one of these objects had their own comet-like tail around them, and they were all a part of a single asteroid at some previous point in time. However, since they are so close, we know that it wasn't a catastrophic collision that caused them to break apart, or even some turbulent sublimation of the ice inside the asteroid pushing outward. Instead, an interesting phenomenon known as the Yorp effect is thought to be the culprit. This is when sunlight is bombarding the asteroid, causing its rotation and speed to increase over time. Scientists find it likely that the asteroid had fractures in it from previous collisions, though none strong enough to actually break it apart. Combining this with the Yorp effect, spinning it around in circles, cause it to slowly break up over time. What I find interesting about this is that these pieces are moving apart from each other very slowly, around the pace of a human at 1.5 kilometers per hour. Jessica Agarwal from the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Studies states that this is a really bizarre thing to observe. We've never seen anything like it before. And I couldn't agree more. The Kepler Space Telescope has reached a fantastic milestone, five years in space. It was first launched on the 6th of March 2009 out of Cape Canaveral, Florida, with the purpose of looking at a small point in the night sky in constellation Cygnus. Its primary goal was to observe transits of planets around other stars in our galaxy. And wow did it. Not only did Kepler find these exoplanets, but revealed that the Milky Way is bubbling over with them, with on average 1.6 planets around every star in our galaxy. Now I'm not just talking planets the size of Jupiter here, but Kepler is able to find Earth-sized planets orbiting stars at a distance that could facilitate liquid water on its surface. Though the spacecraft faced some difficult obstacles over its lifetime, its primary mission was a resounding success, allowing us to look into the universe and see something completely different than we did before. Now Tony and I have loved what Kepler has done so much that we created a mini documentary on our Deep Astronomy channel called Kepler's New Universe. Here's a clip. An Earth-sized planet is defined as a rocky body orbiting a star that is less than one and a quarter the radius of Earth. Kepler observations conducted from May 2009 to March 2012 are consistent with the notion that smaller planets are more common than any other planet in our galaxy. Well, that's it for this week, space fans. Thank you all for watching, and as always, keep looking up. It's really good to be home. I had a wonderful time at Science Online 2014, met some amazing communicators, fellow YouTubers, artists, bloggers, just so many awesome people there. Sorry I wasn't able to be in Space Fan News Live last week because the internet connection was going down quite a bit. However, right now Tony is at South by Southwest with the Hubble Space Telescope and James Webb Space Telescope, but we will still be having our hangout on air tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you have any questions or comments about this video, either leave them below in the comments or hop on over to the event page on Google Plus, and we look forward to seeing you tonight.